DNF did not finish. Welcome to the Atheist Runner. I'm Ralph. Hey, if you're a running enthusiast like I am and you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so and hit that subscribe button down in the corner. Thank you so much. So I experienced my first DNF, did not finish. First time I've had that issue. I've always been able to complete my races. So what happened? Well, I signed up to try and do my first ultra marathon. It was a 50K. And I felt that I was very capable of doing that. But unfortunately, I scheduled it three weeks after I did the Mohican Trail Marathon. By the way, I'll put a video on that at the, uh, at the end of this video that you can click on and take a look at. So you may ask yourself, why did I try and do an ultra marathon three weeks after doing a trail marathon? Well, there's a couple of good reasons. One is it's pretty cheap. It was only 50 bucks. That's a great price for a 50K race. And also didn't involve me driving very far. I did not have to get a hotel and spend the night. So I thought, I'll risk 50 bucks. I'll give it a try. I know it's three weeks. I may be at risk. And maybe I'll have fun and I'll make it. And if I don't, well, I got to spend some time out in the woods and enjoy myself. And that's kind of what happened. I spent you know, about six hours out in the woods but I did not make my bogey of completing that ultra marathon. And I kind of knew I was in trouble pretty on in the race because I could feel this fatigue coming over me. I just didn't have the energy. And I eventually decided it was best for me to not hurt myself, maybe injure myself, to stop the race. And the other thing that influenced was it started raining and I knew the trails were going to be wet and muddy and slippery. And it would not be good for me to be out there running when I'm tired on a wet and muddy trail. Uh, hanging in there, my uh, amateur weather forecaster son-in-law told me they're expecting rain here all well, maybe the next 45 minutes so I should be back to the visitor center by then then I need to make a decision carry on or call it quits it's mostly an energy thing for me right now uh, we'll see see how I feel when I get back there so obviously three weeks was not sufficient time for me to adequately recover from that trail marathon. So what do you mean by recovery? Well, when you do something hard, like a hard run, or you go out and do strength training and lift weights, or you do something around your house, maybe you spend the afternoon moving furniture around or spreading bags of mulch, you get these little micro tears in your muscles. And those micro tears is what makes you sore, what makes you tired, but that's a good thing because the healing and repair of those micro tears is what builds muscle. But it takes your body time to do that. And the amount of time depends on a lot of things. For example, how hard was your exercise? How hard was your run? Certainly a trail marathon or trail running is very hard and so it's harder on the body. So the amount of time you need to recover is not set in stone. There's a general rule of thumb in running that says you should wait one day for every mile you've run before you do another hard run. And again, that's a rule of thumb. I think that's kind of a minimum having gone through the experience of my first DNF. That's kind of a minimum, but there are things that can add and subtract to that that time. For example, how hard was your run? I think doing races are kind of the most difficult hard runs because you're trying to be a little competitive. You don't want to be maybe the last person to finish. You may push yourself, depending on the course, you may have more hills. All those things can create a hard run. Sort of that depends on what you do. Are you running a new course where you do have hills? Are you adding a bunch of miles where you haven't? Are you running faster? So all those impact how much recovery time you need. So it's especially a hard run. You may need to add to that one day um, per mile of run. Now one thing you may take away from it is how long have you been running? Are you a lifelong runner or a decades long runner? In that case, you may not need that one day per mile. You may be able to recover quicker just because you're used to doing that. Now on the other hand are things that can increase that recovery time. Big thing though is age. I'm sorry, but once you get over 40, that muscle repair process, that recovering from fatigue, just takes longer. I'm in my mid 60s. So it's going to take longer than for me than a guy in his mid 40s. So you may need to add more time to that one day per mile. You may need to increase it by 30 or 50 percent. In hindsight, I probably should have waited five and maybe even six weeks before I attempted another hard run. So keep your age in mind and the hardness of your run in mind. Now, can we do things to speed recover? The answer to that is yes. One thing, of course, is sleep. I know, I know all you older runners like myself are saying, if only I could sleep better. And I know that's an unfortunate thing. I have the issue. I'm not a great sleeper. You may be too. So maybe there's not much you can do about it. But something else you can do that everybody can do is eat more protein. Protein is really important in rebuilding that muscle, repairing the, those muscle tears, those micro tears, and that's really important. In fact, you're probably not getting enough protein whether you're a runner or not. Uh, kind of the recommended minimum protein is roughly 0.36 grams for every pound of body weight. 
but that's a bare minimum for somebody who's very sedentary. If you're a runner or if you're older, you need more protein. I'm going to put two links down below. One is from the American Dietetics Association that kind of recommends that athletes, when you're a runner, you're an athlete, should be looking at more like 0.54 to 0.9 grams of protein for every pound of body weight. That's a lot more than that 0.36. And the other link is from AARP that talks about a study where uh, individuals over 50 who ate more like 0.68 grams per pound of body weight were better able to replace and deter muscle loss. So think about increasing your protein during recovery, whether it's lean meats like chicken or legumes and beans or even protein supplements to help increase that protein. That'll help speed up your recovery process. Now, during recovery, it doesn't mean you don't exercise, doesn't mean you don't run, but they should be easy runs, conversational runs. If you're an advocate and do the Galloway run-walk-run method, it means decreasing your run-walk ratio. Run a little less, walk a little more. Give your, your body a chance to recover. It also doesn't mean you can't increase uh, your exercise as you get further into your recovery. Again, the most important thing is to pay attention to your body. If you start running, you, you're feeling fatigued pretty early, or you're huffing and puffing, you're still recovering. Do not push yourself too hard. Give your body a chance to heal, rebuild those muscles, and decrease that fatigue. So let me try and summarize this. So think of that rule. Wait one day for every mile you've run before you do another hard run. Continue to exercise, continue to do easy runs, but give yourself that time to rest. Take away from that time if you're an experienced runner or if your run wasn't too hard. Add to that time if you're over 40 or you have an exceptionally hard run but you have to go by the way you feel. And the last message I didn't really talk about is it's okay to fail. Look at these non-successes as learning opportunities, things to help you grow and do better for your next race or your next uh, activity that you wanna do. Hey, thanks again for watching. Again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I appreciate it if you would click that subscribe icon. I love to share uh, my running experiences with you and what I've learned and enjoyed doing and look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks again.